Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andy and this is Dark Angel Beauty. Thank you so much for stopping in today. Um, today I wanted to give you guys a video that I have been thinking about doing pretty much since I started showing you guys my beauty routine and everything that we've been doing because it's really hard when I do something and then I don't give you guys an update so that I can't let you know, you know, how it's working out, how it, it all went down. Does that make sense? So this is an update video. Um, I think it's something that I'm probably going to implement regularly into the channel because I think it'll be really helpful after I do hauls, after I do product reviews, things like that, to kind of let you guys know how things are doing, how they're working for me, if I like them, if I'll use them again, if I've decided that it's probably not the best thing for me. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into the first thing that I wanted to talk about, which really kind of inspired this idea was my hair color. Because when I did the video, I said, Fairy was great, but it didn't seem to work for colors and I was worried it was gonna fade really fast. And so I wanted to give you guys an update about how my hair is doing because I have not updated it since then. Um, I haven't touched it up with anything. I haven't used any other products. Um, the next time I, I do dye it, I probably will record that as well so you guys can see it. And for some reason that video did really, really well. So I definitely wanted to give you guys an update on how the hair is doing. It has been exactly two weeks since I've dyed it. And as you guys can tell, I mean, it's still really red. It's kind of starting to fade a little bit at the ends, but it's still red. It's not at all brown really. It's not really fading patchy, which is, is one of the big complaints that I had from the purple and the violet when I use that was that it would seem to fade in patchy areas, like my roots would stay really dark and then towards like the tips of my hair it would be basically back to blonde. So that being said, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to give you guys also an idea of what my routine is with my hair to kind of show how I'm making the color last. Um, I think it is partially that the red just seems to be a, maybe a better formula or it's easier because it's a more natural pigmentation and so that way it's sticking to the hair follicles better. I don't really know exactly what it is, but it seems to be holding up more. Um, and I also think it's partially the products that I've been using as well. So, um, so I haven't been showering super regularly to wash out the color. I will say every time I do shower, it does, the, the color is there. It's, you know, my shampoo runs out red. Um, the conditioner runs out red. So it's definitely taking some of the color out, but it does seem to be lasting just much better than all the other colors have. So I did change the shampoo I've been using and the conditioner I've been using. Um, I picked this up just, we were at Target one day. Um, I saw it, this is when I had started dyeing my hair the bright colors and I was trying to find something that would make it last longer. So we picked up the Pantene Pro-V Radiant Color Shine. It was a shampoo conditioner set. Um, I think we maybe paid like at most like $12 for it. It was a very affordable set. It did come with both um, and I decided to uh, take it out of the box and use it even though I have a lot of other shampoos and stuff that are a little bit higher quality and that I've been using for a while and I do like. I was hoping that because these are specifically for a radiant color that it would protect the color when I was shampooing with it and I don't know if that's what's changed it or I don't know if it's a better form formula from Baria. But this seems to have really helped preserve the color. So I wanted to show you guys what shampoos I use. And then I also wanted to tell you what I do when I'm not showering every day. Um, so I jump back and forth between two different dry shampoos that I feel like work really well for me personally. Um, when I first shower, like the day or two after, my hair's not really, really super greasy. It normally holds up pretty well. So I can go with, this is what I would call a lighter dry shampoo, if that makes sense. Like it's just not as drying it's there's still maybe a little bit of oils left in my hair but it seems to work um, this is the not your mother's plump for joy bodybuilding dry shampoo um, i've been using not your mother's for probably about six months now i really like their brand and i really like the purple formula i don't know if it's just if i don't know if it's a different formula for it's just a different scent but for some reason psychologically the purple works best for me because i have like a blue and a red so i buy this one normally um, it's in the scent orange mango. It smells really, really good. And um, I use that when I've showered recently, but I still need just a little bit of extra help with keeping my hair from being too oily. So this is what I use on those days. And then when I get further away from showering, so like if I haven't showered in like three or four days, God, it sounds so bad. Every time I say it, I'm like, I'm a really gross human. I'm so sorry that I'm like this, whatever. Um, but when it gets further away from my showers, I start to, in 
implement, I can speak words, um, I started to implement the Batiste Instant Hair Refresh Dry Shampoo. I bought like, I picked four or five of these up at Ulta during the Christmas season because they were on super duper sale and this man can do some damage to your hair in a, in a good way. He will completely transform the whole texture of your hair even if you haven't showered. It takes out all the oils. It's I'm just gonna show, I hope this shows up on camera like I think it will, but the force that comes behind this, it's like, it's more than any like hour long shower I've ever taken. Just, do you see that? Did that show up? I'm glad that showed up because it's, I mean, I can see it and hopefully the lighting really caught it. So this bad boy will definitely help with oils and keeping your hair looking dry and looking clean, even though it's been a couple days, which is why I start to use it. I feel like if I use it right after I showered, it honestly dries my hair out too much. So I save it for when it's really starting to get oily and it's really been a couple days. I'm not gonna lie to you, today is Tuesday. The last time I showered was Saturday night. So it's been a good two and a half, almost three days on my hair. I'm still using the Not Your Mother's. Um, my hair is actually pretty dry right now, surprisingly. Um, it did well. Today I had to go to work, so I did try and make it look somewhat nice because I knew we were gonna be filming today. But I only used the Not Your Mother's because I didn't want it to be too, too dry. So that's the routine I've been using. I'll probably shower. If I don't shower tomorrow, I'll shower the day after that. Um, I try and at least do it every four to five days. God, it sounds so bad, I know. But um, I try and shower as infrequently so I preserve that color, but and not so infrequently that I'm still a disgusting human being. So I did want to update you guys on that because that, like I said, that video has been doing really well. So I wanted to kind of show you that I, um, Honestly, just based on how my hair is lasting right now, I feel like I can get at least another two weeks out of the Faria before I'll have to update um, and change, add a little bit more color to it. Um, maybe use that Arctic Fox that I was talking about before. So um, overall, I would say it's worth it then. For a $10 hair dye, that's a really good amount of time. I think everybody kind of agrees that when you dye your hair a month is about the average time you're gonna need to touch it up. So so overall, I would recommend the Faria in the red color. I would not recommend it in the, the purple or the violet just because that did fade it fast. But like I said, this one has not done that. So good job. Moving on to the next step. Uh, I wanted to show you guys just a few of the products that I've hauled in recent videos that I was excited about trying and either I really, really responded well to or I really, really didn't respond well to. Um, I've not, these are not the only products I've tested. I've tested other products as well and I've talked about a few of them, I believe. But these are ones that really kind of immediately I was like, whoa. Like I said, either good or bad. The first thing I want to say is y'all know I do not like foundation brushes. For whatever reason, they don't work well for me. I feel like they just absorb a lot of product and they don't really give me a full coverage. I feel like I always look streaky and I always have to go in with the beauty blender and fix it up and make it look more even. And so because of that, I normally just use a beauty blender. I feel like it wastes less product. I feel like it's an easier application process for myself. So I don't really like foundation brushes. I continue to buy them. I have a couple that should be really, really great because I love the brands that are producing them and I just can't make them work for me. So I told you guys about the Eco Tools 360 brushes. Um, I was so excited. I took them, they were still in the package when I showed you guys in the haul, but these are them out of the package. That's what they look like. They're literally like little circular brushes. And I am so pleasantly surprised with how well these brushes worked. I just wasn't expecting it. It was only $12 because they were on sale. So I bought the set of three for $12 and I was like, you know what, if I hate it, it's not that much money that I'm losing. But they work so incredibly. In fact, I put on my foundation this morning with this brush. Um, I don't really know what to say about them other than they're just the weirdest brushes in the best way. Like their, their bristles are so compact that I feel like virtually no makeup gets absorbed into them and it gives you just this really nice like kind of almost airbrush finish. And so I am so glad that I picked these up. I showed my mom and then she was like, oh my gosh, I wanna get them. And she even asked me like, how much were they? And I was like, $14. And her mouth fell open because they're, for the, the quality of brush that you're getting, that is such a good deal. So I do wanna show you guys just really quickly. This is the foundation brush. Um, I've been using this one. The only one I have not used, to be honest, is the contour one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of blending with brushes for contour either. I feel like maybe this brush will change my mind, but I just am stuck in my ways and I haven't tried it yet. 
I've used the foundation one and I've used the conceal one. The conceal one I've been using around my eyebrows and it's been working really, really well. But I want to show you guys just the bristles, how... Sorry, Nikki's giving me instructions if you guys had pause. But how tight these bristles are. And like, I don't know if that's as cool to you guys as it is to me. But just the way, and they bounce back and they're just so... And so my mom was like, oh, it's like a kabuki brush. And I was like, no, it's not like a kabuki brush because they're they're powdery and airy and they the bristles are light and they're supposed to like give you a nice like spread of foundation, but powder foundation. This is like, this is like a condensed kabuki brush for your liquid foundation. So I'm so excited that I got these brushes. They are definitely a new staple in my collection. I use them pretty much every day. I've used them pretty much every day since I opened them. So I'm very, very happy I picked these up. So I definitely recommend them even at full price. It's $16.99 for the full price without the discount that was running when I picked them up. It is well worth it. I highly recommend them. I would highly recommend picking these up and trying them out for yourself. Even if you don't like foundation brushes, because like I said, I did not either and they really work for me. So definitely a good buy for me. Um, I want to jump into something that I was a little disappointed with now. Um, I only have two other things to show you guys for the update video. And this, I'm going to blame this one on myself because I just have the wrong expectations, I think, for this kind of a product. It's the Olay Total Effect 7-in-1 CC Toning Cream. This is what it looks like in the box and this is what it looks like out of the box. Like I said, this one is on me because every time I use a CC cream, I just want it to do more. And I know the idea is that a color correcting toner is supposed to be like a moisturizer that has just a little bit of color to it to make your skin look more even. And I think I always hope it's going to do more for me than it does because of my rosacea. I put it on and I expect it to kind of even out my skin tone and it doesn't do that. That's not what it's meant to do. It's meant to give you a little bit of skincare. It's meant to give you a little bit of sunscreen and it's meant to give you a little bit of color so that you can really go in with like a natural look. I used it. I don't hate it. It is by far one of the better CC creams I have. But that being said, I had to use a ton of concealer with it to cover up my red areas and I had to use a powder foundation on top of it that's a little bit heavier than I would normally use. It was the Bare Minerals Powder Foundation, which I actually own in a, in a shade or two darker than what my natural skin tone is, so it always kind of gives me like a little bit of a tan glow. Actually, in combination with the CC cream, because normally I put it on with a foundation and, and that makes it kind of look a little bit heavier, I think. With, in, with combination of the, the CC cream, that, that Bare Minerals one actually worked really well for me, so this may have been something that was a good buy just because I could make that one, the Bare Minerals one, work more standalone than having it, having to really work with it to make it work with another foundation. But overall, it was probably not worth the $20 I spent on it, even though it's a good product. Um, it'll be most likely like a moisturizer for me at the very most, or it'll never be standalone. I'll never be able to just throw it on and go out there and, and be comfortable with what I'm wearing because I do look for it a full coverage in a foundation. And so that is my own fault because I know what a CC cream is, but every time I tell myself, oh, it's gonna be different. And that's what my mom was like, you really are not looking for a CC cream. You're looking for something that is going to give you more full coverage. So it's my own false expectations that have led me to be disappointed with this product. But overall, for me, it was just not worth the $20, even though I got it on sale. So I was a little disappointed with that buy. Um, but to end on a high note, I will tell you guys that this product is so great. It is the Yes2 Primer. Uh, it's normally $9.99. It is normally $9.99. I got it for, I think, $7.99 after um, the sale price was applied. And if the first thing I want you guys to notice is like, I pulled it out of the package. I don't think it was out of the package when I showed you in the video, but there's a lot of product in there. Like that all right there is product and it's thick. So you get a ton of product for it. And then the second thing I noticed in it is just like, it smells so refreshing. It's cucumber. It's a cucumber cooling primer. So it's supposed to kind of ease your skin, which as you guys know, with my redness, especially after I do harsh skincare routines, that's really something that I look for, something that's going to kind of calm my skin down and let it be cool and soothe after a harsh regimen or after it's been abused for a little bit. So the cucumber and the cooling effect in the smell, it just really makes a beautiful primer. It's soothing. 
it's lightweight, it made me feel moisturized and happy. So I was really excited. I actually used it in combination with the CC cream. And I feel like for a primer, it was probably the best thing I could have used with that CC cream because it is a very natural, lightweight, organic primer in my opinion. Um, it's definitely worth the buy, especially at such a low cost. Um, and like I said, I love Yes Tooth's makeup wipes, so I wasn't surprised that I loved one of their other products and I'm glad I discovered it. That being said, that's pretty much all I have to update you guys on right now. I'll be doing a couple, a couple other product reviews. Um, you guys have seen me use some of the other products on film, which is why I didn't necessarily want to go and give you like a detailed description of it. But these are things that I've used off camera um, that have really either worked or not worked for me that I wanted to give you guys an update on so that you knew how the products were responding to me, how I was responding to the products and um, kind of give you guys an idea more than just, you know, hey, look, I purchased this. Um, is it worth it or not? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you giving us a watch. Um, if you get a chance, please give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me and to Nikki. Um, and as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You stay girly and have just a twist of darkness.